Welcome everyone to Sharing Data Better, the rise of data institutions. And it's great to see so many attendees, even though we are still not all in the same room. Hopefully I will at least be seeing some of you in person before too long. So we have an outstanding lineup of speakers and panelists today, and it makes me very proud to see how this part of our work has grown in recent years. And today we'll hear from and be inspired by a diverse range of data institutions. Some are big businesses thinking hard about what stewarding data responsibly could and should look like for them. Some are long-standing institutions learning and exploring how they can use their positions to steward data more effectively. And we can't forget that open data needs stewarding too. So we'll hear from some of our most important open data institutions as well. This year, the ODI is celebrating its 10th anniversary, which will be marking with our Data Decade campaign, celebrating all the work that we've done and anticipating all the work we have to do. It may not be a long journey from our first offices in Shoreditch to here in King's Place, but we've certainly come a long way as an organization and we're still on that journey. Often when we set out on such a journey with ideas, aspirations and ambitions, we may wonder if we're taking the correct path, especially when we're defining new terms and exploring new landscapes. The rise of data institutions, our reason for meeting today, describes one of these journeys. What do we know? Well, we know that what we're getting, that we're getting something right. I mean, after all, over a thousand of you registered to join us. And since the program's first event back in 2020, the response to the work we've done on data institutions has been loud and enthusiastic. The discussions around what exactly defines data institutions and the bounds of data stewardship continue as we enhance and refine our understanding. But we can be sure that we have landed upon an important building block of our data futures, as well as beginning to see the social good that can come from data institutions. We need new institutional architectures, new data institutions, to realize the potential of data at scale in our internet and web enabled world. Here at the ODI, we define data institutions as organizations that steward data on behalf of others, often for public, charitable, or educational aims. There are many different species of data institutions, and you'll encounter a wide variety today. Some, like UK Biobank, that steward sensitive data about half a million Brits, have been around for years and are very large organizations. Others, like Open Humans, enable people to donate data from their Fitbits and other such devices and are still relatively small. We're fortunate enough to have Bastian Greshaka Chavaris, Director of Research for Open Humans, with us, along with James Farah, who is Director for Worker Info Exchange, a nonprofit that empowers workers to access and utilize data that is collected about them in the course of their employment. And I'm sure neither will mind me referring to them as being at the heart of our more radical data institutions. They build campaigning and politics into the core of their work. We've already seen and had a huge global impact from the work we began at the ODI in open banking, which means you can do your accounts and add expenses from your smartphone app while you wait for your coffee or have more control over your credit score. But we want to see the safe and effective stewarding of data across many more sectors and throughout society to the advantage of the public and the economy at large. Transport data, despite being a success story, is still fragmented and not entirely free across the UK. We've seen how valuable the TfL data has been to third party apps and just making our capital run more efficiently and more cost effectively for the millions who live here. We need to ensure that data can work in the same way for every city and for every rural area too. Many of our guests today, you won't be surprised to learn, describe their organizations as data institutions. But there are others 
who you might be surprised to hear from at an event like this. Take keynote speaker Nick Pyanson, for example. He's the curator and fossil marine, of fossil marine mammals at the Smithsonian Institute's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. So what might that have to do with data institutions, you may well ask? Well, in his talk, Data and the Whale, why natural history museums, why the natural history museums matter for the crises of the 21st century, Nick Pyanson will argue that thinking about natural history museums as data institutions can open new visions for these collections as data that there is there to be discovered, illuminated, and especially used to help us understand the many intersecting global crises that continue to define the 21st century. We could and should encourage museums and other cultural heritage organizations around the world to join the data institutions movement. And even global businesses who would never describe themselves as data institutions are starting to recognize their responsibilities as stewards of the data they hold about their customers. Two renowned data experts, Mary Rusick, Chief Data Officer at Standard Chartered CCIB, and Alexander Galt, Digital Ethics Leader at Inter IKEA Group, will be discussing the responsibilities and opportunities afforded by data stewardship with Stuart Coleman, the ODI's Director of Learning and Business Development. Nowhere are the opportunities for better data use and sharing more evident than in health? What can other sectors and domains learn from health data research? Wen Hua Li, CEO of the charity Action Against AMD, and Alistair Denniston, consultant ophthalmologist at the University Hospitals Birmingham, discussed what they've learned from their work in the field of macular degeneration. These learnings aren't just technical such as experiences with trusted research environments, but also about the economic, political, and social aspects of responsible data use and sharing. At the ODI, we're also delighted to be working with organizations such as Microsoft, the McGovern Foundation, and the Global Partnership of AI to better understand and support data institutions. We've also seen global progress in developing new approaches to stewarding data elsewhere via data intermediaries in the UK, the European Commission's Data Governance Act, and personal data banks in Japan. However, we need more imagination, more innovation, more experimentation, and more reflection if we're to build new institutions fit for the data age. If we're to see data used equitably to address the pressing challenges of our time. Otherwise, we risk data being hoarded and monopolized by organizations in the public and private sector, and us as individuals fearing how that data might be used, worrying about the security of the data, concerned that the data will not be used to empower us or to help human flourishing in the age of algorithmic decision making. The beauty of events such as this as well as focusing our minds, it helps those working around us to stop and think about what comes next. It makes us all think about what data institutions offer and where they may or may not already exist. Speaking for the ODI, this has meant that just an hour ago, I had a meeting with the water regulator Offwat to open up discussions about what we can do to improve access to up to the minute data on water safety and water quality. Whether that's the water you drink or water you swim in, and we're already doing some great work with Offwat. So we wanted to see what we could do, what more we could do, what data could do to help them in their aims to clean up our waterways, improve every aspect of water quality and delivery, alongside the water companies, the Environment Agency and DEFRA. For me, this is something of a passion project, not least because I like to spend my leisure time in, on or near water. And it's something that my students at Oxford are equally passionate about. Seeing their anger about water cleanliness issues, looking at my own frustration around the lack of access to high quality, ubiquitous real time data about water quality in our rivers and estuaries, the lack of availability and access to detailed data about stormwater and sewage released into delicate habitats. We know that data makes a difference in this context. Performance, behaviors and outcomes change when data is made available at scale. 
we've already opened a conversation with people like conversation uh, conservation charity the rivers trust who have made impressive progress in collating data in this area and showing how it can be used to good effect as a campaigning lever they've mapped the problem and are able to actively show where problems with sewage discharges are taking place they're actively building apis and data institutions despite the fact some of the water sampling they use still consists of dunking an old drinking bottle in a river. Some of the newest technology with some of the oldest. And we hope to be working with many other citizen scientists to not only create somewhere that this data can be seen, but also to find innovative ways to bring pressure upon those in the industry to free up this data and clean up their acts. This seems to be something of a critical mass in this area with newspapers such as The Guardian and The Daily Telegraph running campaign pieces on water cleanliness and safe swimming. We can work together to utilize data for social good, but otherwise it may just languish because without being used, data is just space filler on a drive or in the cloud. Whether the solution is in fact a new data institution remains to be seen, but as we look to the future, sharing data with entrusted environments will be essential to tackling the existential challenges we face, from climate to health, energy to the built and natural environment. It's a fundamental part of the ODI's ethos to make the value of data understandable to everyone. Because from that understanding, we get insight, agency and power. The power of ordinary people to hold governments, organizations and businesses to account in what they do in every aspect of our lives, as well as providing those governments, organizations and businesses with the ability to create value through the sharing of data. With the importance of the use of data in mind, it really pleases me to be able to announce that the Open Data Institute is today committing to forming a data institution for the Open Referral UK data standard. Open Referral UK provides a means of describing public and community services so that information can be shared and combined in a way that everyone understands. The standard was recently endorsed by the UK Government Data Standards Authority for the open interchange of data describing services. This, our first hosted data institution, will give us first-hand knowledge and hands-on experience of the day-to-day -day stewardship of data. Open referral members will include representatives from the international open referral community, and we aim to bring the UK and international open referral communities even closer together over time. The data institution will represent the interests of organisations who invest in this data, invest in the data standard, including local authorities, government departments, the NHS, community groups and private organisations. It'll help people who are adopting the standard and give them confidence in its longevity and the responsiveness to requests for improvements. Our ambition is to open service data to enable efficient reuse for many purposes, to encourage incremental improvement via feedback from mass exposure and to stimulate innovation amongst application developers. So look, I hope you enjoy today's event and that it encourages you to explore, collaborate, and be inspired by the possibilities of data institutions. Data institutions are on the rise, and we hope that the ODI's part in their future will continue to grow too. <laughs>